This time 2022, presented by ITW Universe, co-presented by Bank of Baroda and Bauer by Avantis, welcomes you all to the live speaker series by IIM Bangalore. We have amongst us Bank of Baroda, one of the largest PSBs that has over 130 million customers over 100 plus overseas branches. And from this STM Institute, we have with us Mr. Sulakar B. Nayak, General Manager, Zonal Head and uh, Head of Bangalore Division. Mr. Sudhakar Nayak, a native of Bangalore, Bangalore has completed his MCOM, CIIB, LLB, and also he's one of the first time holder from Mangalore University in his BCOM. So, uh, Mr. Sudhakar Nayak uh, joined Vijaya Bank in 1985 and has been part of Vijaya Bank and served in various roles and locations. Post that, he also was the major part in integration management of Vijaya Bank with Bank of Baroda and has, has successfully done it. And currently, he is serving as the zonal manager, zonal uh, head for Bangalore Division. And currently, we would like Mr. Sulakar and I to talk about the banking technology and innovation practices as part of our Zika series. Welcome, sir. friends. So it's very exciting and nice to be amongst you. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, when I came inside this uh, uh, premises and this auditorium, the memories of uh, three years is very fresh in my mind. I was just wondering uh, which is this particular area, uh, what scene was shot here and all these things. So it's nice to be uh, with all of you, the young and fresh minds here. Uh, this is uh, perhaps the post-lunch session, I suppose. And uh, usually, uh, it is a common practice that uh, uh, post-lunch session is a very difficult session. And uh, the challenge before the uh, speaker is not just to deliver the address, but also keep the audience awake. Okay, So that's the challenge. I don't know why the organizers have chosen uh, me for that purpose. Uh, but anyway, I will try to do my uh, best uh, in order to fulfill both the objectives. Uh, as far as uh, uh, the topic is concerned, uh, I just uh, discussed uh, with my team also. Uh, I am going to visit the Premier Institute. So uh, my address should be of uh, that level. Uh, when I thought that uh, if I have to deliver upon a certain important intricacies of the subject or uh, anything which is appealing to you, like uh, education loan and all these things. Uh, we decided that uh, this is something which uh, most of you know, maybe knowing better than me, because today everybody is having access to Google and everything is available there. So instead of that, uh, what, we dis what I decided is that, uh, let me attempt to take you through uh, the exciting journey of banking, especially the Indian banks, uh, through the technological evolution. Because most of you, as I could see, are uh, Gen X or Gen Y, uh, who are born and brought up after 80s and 90s. So you may not be having a clear idea as to how this journey of a technological evolution has happened in the Indian banking industry. You might have just read or uh, Googled it, but uh, uh, hearing it from a person like me who has experienced this, I think that makes an exciting uh, uh, listener. As far as bankers are concerned, you can be rest assured that uh, uh, we can uh, talk on any subject because uh, it is jokingly said that bankers are uh, uh, jack of all trades but master of none. So we can talk on any subject, but that's not the important thing. But this journey, I'm assuring you, uh, we sometimes uh, very uh, jokingly say that uh, ledger say, Utkar, ledger se utkar, computer se nikal kar, laptop mein baith kar, ab ungli par naas aaye. This is uh, the journey of banking, the technological evolution. So let me make an attempt to take you through this exciting journey 
uh, as to how it all happened and uh, what is the position today and what is the way forward. Friends, here, before we start this journey, we should uh, uh, know as to You should know something about uh, the Kodak moments. I think uh, as management student, you are all aware. Kodak moment, a uh, great organization which uh, refused to accept the changes which is happening around them, uh, which is refused to uh, go away from uh, the traditional beaten path. What happened to them? They refused to acknowledge that the technology is coming. Uh, the digital uh, photography is uh, emerging and they stuck to their uh, well laid down uh, uh, principles like the color photography, paper photography and all these things. Ultimately, they were relegated to the history. Very recently, we know about uh, the Nokia experiment. How Nokia uh, could not cope up with the competition and uh, the emerging technology. But when it comes to Indian banking, uh, we should know that Indian banks of course, the foreign banks and uh, uh, to a large extent uh, the new generation Indian banks, uh, they are all technology driven, no doubt about that. But uh, the important factor is that even the public sector banks did not lag behind. When they realized that the technology is the uh, differentiator, they immediately jumped to the bandwagon and adopted it wholeheartedly and uh, uh, proceeded forward. That is the reason today uh, the Indian banking, especially the public sector banks also are very strong in technology. You cannot say that uh, the particular bank, so and so bank, either it is a uh, private sector bank or foreign bank are offering something which the Indian public sector banks are not having. Today everybody is almost on the same platform. But how it started is really exciting. So when I talked about uh, uh, the 60s, 70s and 80s, when most of you are not born at all, even including me, because I was born in 1963 and joined the bank in 1985. Uh, and why I decided about uh, this point is that uh, I am a practical banker. I am not a domain expert. So, uh, as I said in the beginning, talking about uh, the intricacies of the technology and all these things is not my realm of affair. As a practical banker for over uh, three decades of experience in branch banking, and uh, operational area, and currently heading uh, one of the most prosperous and important zones of our bank in the state of Karnataka, uh, which is uh, uh, spread across about uh, nine districts of uh, the potential place of Karnataka, having 295 branches, six regions, and over uh, uh, 84,000 crore uh, business mix. I'm only delving into the practical aspect and ringside view of uh, the technological evolution. So it all started when there was a lot of resistance for uh, the change, just like anything. Even in banking industry also, uh, in the 80s and 60s, 70s and 80s, there never used to be a single machine inside the bank. Not even a single machine. Even calculators are very rarely used. So first introduction, and it used to be completely a manual effort. Each branch was stuffed with uh, uh, hundreds of employees. And that used to be a virtue at that point of time. We remember, like uh, the KG Road branch, MG Road branch, Mayo Hall branch, Trinity Circle branch, Banerjata branch. All these branches used to have huge number of staff. Some of the branches were having more than 150, 200 branches. And it used to be a matter of pride that we used to say, I worked in that branch which has this much of staff and no machine at all, no trace of machines. From that situation, and uh, everything used to be manual, balancing, tallying, posting, everything used to happen in manual, and uh, human uh, expertise, like uh, Mr. So-and-so is an expert in uh, tallying. That used to be the virtue. From that state, slowly, one by one steps started. The first one is a, uh, what is called ALPM, Advanced Ledger Posting Machine. This was the first introduction of technology. And it was nothing but to tell you in a very simple way that it is one small computer. Not like uh, the uh, flat screen computer also. It used to be a big dumba. And uh, uh, it used to cater to uh, one segment of uh, the transaction. That is, for example, savings bank. Savings banks used to be in one box. Current account, 
another box like that. And it is just confined to that particular transaction zone. That was the first one. And from there, the next thing used to be extension of uh, these uh, computers. SP, current, term deposit, advances, remittances, like that it started spreading. So that is the expansion part of that. And once everything was uh, streamlined, then the next phase came when all these individual units were integrated inside the branch. See, that's what I'm telling. This is uh, really those who have not gone through it. It appears to be sometimes crazy. Each unit <laughs> handling one segment, and then ultimately it was integrated, and that was uh, uh, called uh, the LAN, branch LAN, locally in the network for that particular branch. That means all operations of one particular branch was brought together and it was integrated. But outside the branch, they did not have any connection at all. They did not have any relationship. Like uh, if Tempegoda branch, road branch is completely computerized, uh, it doesn't have to do anything with the, uh, say, MG road branch. But in the next phase, in between, the ATMs and credit cards started which is again uh, uh, one of the uh, new evolution at that point of time. And remember one thing, again it appears to be very crazy. The ATM has nothing to do with the, your uh, operational network. The ATM used to be a separate uh, box which used to dispense cash. It has nothing to do with the, your account. In other words, uh, in most of the cases at that point of time, when you are drawing some money from an uh, ATM, it doesn't necessarily mean that you are having that much of money in your account. Because ATM used to be a separate unit, and there afterwards, it used to be debited to the operational account. Because there was no networking. So from that stage, what came next was a CBS, which is well known by now, core banking solutions. Now what happened? Each branches, which were already networked, got again interconnected. And it all, uh, started spreading across the organization. For example, uh, Bank of Baroda, or uh, Punjab National Bank, or uh, OBC, or Vijay Bank, or Kendra Bank. Each branch got into the CBS platform, and the entire uh, bank got networked. So anything happening in one branch is automatically interconnected with another branch. And friends, one exciting feature of that time was that some of the processes which used to be very, very important part of the functionality of those banks got completely uh, relegated to history. I just want to uh, take two names, which I think mostly you may not be knowing at all. Mail transfer, MT, and telegraphic transfer, PT. They used to be two important aspects of branch functioning. If you go to any branch, the remittances means it is MT, PT, and DD. But with the introduction of CBS, MT, that is the mail transfer, and the telegraphic transfer has completely gone to the books of history. Because who wants MT and PT? When you can go to the branch and simply transfer the money from one branch to another branch, one account to another account of the same bank. Absolutely, there is no need for any other mechanism. Otherwise, earlier, they used to send money by way of mail transfer which is nothing but debiting one account, sending one advice to another bank. It will reach there. Not even courier was there by way of post. It takes its own time. And afterwards, when the advice was received, the beneficiary's account will be credited. Telegraphic transfer is something uh, faster. It ha used to happen over a, uh, a, tra a telegram. But with the advent of CBS, this is also now completely gone into history. So with that, uh, some kind of uh, uh, speed is introduced to the banking transactions. But in the continuous evolution of uh, the technology, the next best thing happened was uh, internet. By that time, in India, internet uh, was completely stabilized, and it has become uh, virtually, uh, practically, everybody's uh, usage. So when uh, banks adopted internet in a very big way, obviously, uh, the transaction shift has completely moved to uh, the technological uh, advancement. Whatever the banks used to do inside the bank branch, now that has gone out of the bank branch, and uh, that facility was offered to the customers. So now, 
even for transferring the money, customer need not come to the branch. They can do from the comfort of their office. So internet banking facility was provided to the customers. So now the question is, even uh, uh, coming to the branch for the transferring is also taken away from uh, the routine of the customers. Alongside, uh, what uh, the banks also thought is, it is not just uh, the use of technology in the operation part, but also in the process part also it can be introduced. Like say for example, so many processes which have nothing to do with the customer's uh, point of view are done in the banks. Those processes are also continuously and gradually moved to the technological realm. Uh, one example is about uh, the back office functions, like uh, processing of the loans. Some of the loans, the parameterized loans, especially uh, personal loans or uh, uh, housing loans or uh, uh, auto loans, education loans, these are the loans where uh, there is no much application of human mind because they are based on certain parameters. For example, personal loan. If you are a salaried person, on the basis of uh, your uh, uh, income uh, per month salary, uh, you are eligible for a certain amount of loan. So there is uh, nothing much to think about that. There is no much uh, uh, analysis part. If the salary is so much, you can get this much of loan. And it is repayable in this much number of months, and the rate of interest is this much. Absolutely, there is no need for uh, any tampering or uh, uh, some kind of analysis there. So those type of uh, functions are shifted to uh, the back office. So there is uh, some portal, some kind of application where this uh, data is input and it uh, used to generate the process notes, appraisal notes, sanction letters, <coughs> even documentation and disbursement. So slowly, even account opening, which used to be a regular manual process, has also got uh, relegated to uh, the technology. And all these back office functions started. But friends, you must be remembering one thing. All these revolutions were happening within the parameter of the organization. Say, for example, if one bank has done all these things, the benefits of this is available within that bank organization only. It never used to go beyond the bank. Now the next stage was truly a sort of revolution. It is in the form of an RTGS or an NEFT. So RTGS has completely taken out uh, all this process beyond the individual bank. Now banks got interconnected and in this process uh, there uh, is a complete connectivity among the banks. Of course, Reserve Bank of India has uh, taken a lot of initiative in this and facilitated uh, this uh, technological advancement. Now by way of RTGS, earlier it used to be within the bank, now even outside the bank also, on the basis of internet banking, even the customer can, uh, from the comfort of their own house or office, used to do the transaction without resorting to the involvement of the bank. On their own, uh, the things started happening. So when all these things, uh, revolution is uh, taking place, <coughs> further it was uh, brought to uh, the convenient level, even going beyond the internet, uh, the banking has finally reached your hand, your pocket. And instead of uh, uh, you are doing anything on the desktop, it has now moved to your fingertips. The mobile banking. Mobile banking has completely, <coughs> completely revolutionized as far as uh, today's banking is concerned, because everything now is happening through mobile banking. Various banks have brought out uh, their own apps and their own uh, uh, systems and process. And now, whatever you are required to do on your uh, PC, now you are doing virtually by just uh, uh, fingertips. Alongside, in the today's generation, uh, there are a lot of uh, payment gateways and uh, uh, channels which are also partnering the banks uh, for uh, the better customer service. And apart from the basic banking, which is nothing but uh, borrowing and lending, the banks have also ventured into other ancillary services which are again completely technology driven. Uh, the best part is uh, cash management and funds management. Here, uh, the entire uh, burden of managing the funds, uh, either in the form of uh, having a complete control over whatever the receipts are coming. It is especially for some uh, organizations like uh, uh, 
uh, premier institutions, uh, education institutions, uh, hospitals, uh, trusts, uh, and corporations, government departments, where they are dealing with the innumerable uh, transactions. This cash management and funds management will help them to track each and every transactions, which otherwise they would have depended upon the, the banks for MIS or details. Now they are managing on their own, and uh, this is how we have uh, started working on that. Coming to the current trends, this is what uh, the exciting journey which I have told. And in this process, you might have observed that uh, some of the things which I have mentioned, uh, today you are only finding in the uh, books or in the Google. You cannot definitely see this. And you cannot even today imagine there used to be some process called like this, or some uh, instrument like uh, MT or TT, even demand draft. Today, because of RTGS, uh, there is no question of uh, any uh, usage of uh, demand drafts. <coughs> except if some government department or some uh, organization which insists on producing demand draft, nobody takes demand draft. Checks, the usage has completely come down. Uh, you may be wondering if I tell that uh, there used to be one specific act, Act of Parliament, that is Negotiable Instrument Act, which used to define the various characteristics uh, the relationship between uh, uh, the various uh, parties involved in these uh, negotiable instruments, like uh, checks, uh, demand drafts, and all these things. Today, because of uh, this uh, IMPAs, or RTGS, or NEFT, uh, I think perhaps there is no need for uh, this act at all, because the usage of uh, these instruments has completely come down. So in the current uh, uh, situation, with all this uh, technological evolution, today, the banking has become completely technology driven. No bank in the current context can afford to be without technology. And technology should also be cutting edge technology. So today's context, the banks are technology driven. And the latest trend, the current trend is, there is a lot of digital disruption happening in the market. Fintechs, which are a very, very important player, and the current reality is that nobody can ignore them. A bank, the, my bank today is a, one of the topmost bank, but uh, no bank in the country can ignore the role of fintechs today. It is very, very important. They are playing a very crucial role because of their uh, reach, because of their uh, uh, technological capabilities, because of their uh, acumen, alertness, and uh, swift mode of operation. Uh, they are trying to wean away a lot of customers from the traditional banking concept. So fintechs are a reality today, and we have to uh, understand, we have to recognize, and we have to uh, definitely make up our mind to deal with the, this particular challenge. Even in some of the basic core areas, which uh, uh, definitely cannot be uh, deciphered in the form of a technological perspective, Today, technology is playing a very important role. KYC, know your customer, which is the, the rug bed of a banking relationship, is today technology driven. There is no need for uh, anybody uh, to depend upon the paperwork, elaborate paperwork, uh, authorization, approvals, and all these things. KYC is technology driven. Even you might have uh, seen the advertisement uh, during COVID times. In fact, I have to uh, make a special mention about uh, COVID. Because COVID has given the, the technological teeth to the banks. Lot of operations which used to happen uh, pre-COVID era have been completely shifted to COVID. One example which I can quote is about video KYC. You might have seen some uh, ad uh, wherein uh, some actor is flashing his uh, uh, pan card or uh, his uh, signature on the KYC front in order to enable him to open the account. Uh, don't be under the impression that it is only a realm of uh, some uh, uh, privileged uh, bank or organization. My bank, Bank of Baroda, is also offering this facility. In fact, the building where my office is there also houses the video KYC set. So video KYC has now become a, a, a regular feature with most of the banks. So even for KYC, today customer need not uh, visit the bank if you want to open their account. It is possible only on the basis of uh, your uh, mobile phone and video KYC, everything will be taken care of. Then coming to uh, 
credit card, which has become a very, very part and parcel of uh, everybody's day-to-day uh, -day life, uh, it is completely now going to the, the, the digital way. Our bank, Bank of Baroda, has got a subsidiary, which is exclusively dealing in the issuing of a credit card, the Bob card, by our Bob FSL, Bob Financial Services. And uh, when they launched this credit card drive initially, they found that with the technology, we can uh, do wonders. So in the next uh, uh, phase, when they go for uh, expansion, they completely went uh, for uh, the digital uh, delivery. So as a result of that, today, my bank's credit card, Bob card, is completely driven in the tab. Opening of SB account or current account on tab has become a virtually a regular routine in the branches. But even credit card is today offered on tab. There is no need for uh, any elaborate paperwork. It is completely driven in the tab. Then, another uh, important uh, uh, development and uh, feature, regular feature of a current banking trend is that end-to-end -end solutions. Uh, the one example here is uh, pre-approved loans. So usually in any banking process, you may be uh, knowing that uh, it has to start from a particular point, then there is a process, and ultimately it culminates in certain things. But today, everything has been packaged. Just like we all enjoy the packaged food today, uh, go to some shop, get some packaged food, there is no need to uh, again do the process of uh, cooking and all these things. Everything is pre-cooked, it needs to be put into hot water, something like that. So today, in the banking also, because of technology, uh, there is a mention of a lot of uh, packaged products. Pre-approved loans. I think uh, today, everybody is aware, uh, you also get a lot of calls, a lot of uh, messages that you are eligible for certain loans. And you, can, you are entitled for this loan. So this is nothing but a pre-approved loan. And how it is coming? Artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, behavioral studies. This helps the bank in order to devise certain pre-packaged products. Personal loans are the most popular in this uh, area. On the basis of your transactions, on the basis of the conduct of your account, on the basis of your turnover in the account if you are a businessman, or on the basis of the GST returns filed by you, on the basis of income tax, on the basis of merely your spending power, how many times you have used the credit card, for what kind of a purpose you have used your credit card, a detailed analysis is made, and on that trends, a product is devised, a service is devised and offered to you on a platter. So you will get a message that you are entitled for a pre-approved loan. When you uh, approach, when you access to that, automatically your eligibility will be assessed, some amount is uh, devised, and that amount you are entitled for that, no further uh, paperwork, the amount is automatically credited to your account. This is uh, the era of uh, pre-approved loans. Even in the digital uh, delivery channels, there has been a complete uh, uh, reorientation of the focus. Previously, uh, the delivery channel of uh, the banks used to be the brick and mortar branches. Everybody was comfortable, and at the moment you say Vijaya Bank or Bank of Baroda or State Bank of India, you will get a picture of a particular office, particular building, a logo, and all these things. No, today the concept is changed. Today, we are not talking in terms of brick and mortar branches. We are talking about uh, the touch points. We don't talk about uh, the branches, we talk about touch points. Touch points are nothing but uh, the delivery channels. And uh, it could be anything. It could be a brick and mortar branch, no doubt. We require it in a certain uh, areas to cater to certain segments. But apart from brick and mortar branches, the extension of that, the mobile banking unit, or even the, the bank correspondents, banking correspondents, BCs, bank mitras, they go to the remotest part of uh, the country, <coughs> they reach those areas where even uh, we cannot think of opening of the branches with a handheld machine, and they offer all the basic minimum services which a bank offers in the uh, branch. That is one channel. Of course, ATM is there, and then uh, uh, this, uh, uh, other units are there, apart from ATM, uh, there are uh, e-lobbies are there, which provides, because why a person would frequently go to the branch? In most of the cases, he will go just to deposit the money, withdraw the money, passbook updation, or get some basic services. When all these services, which 
is about 80 to 90 percent of the daily branch footfall is taken care in the digital way, then there is no need for a pick and bottle branch. And the Reserve Bank of India has of late floated the idea of a digital banking unit. This is a new development which uh, all the banks are adopting wholeheartedly. The digital banking unit is a, a glorified version of an e-lobby. Of course, whatever is there in the e-lobby, it is there. Uh, the cash dispenser, ATM, passbook printer, and uh, internet kiosk. And apart from that, uh, within a small space of about 800 to 900 square feet, apart from these uh, machines, uh, there is a provision for one attendant, one or two attendant, who will be helping you to give some uh, basic information beyond this. So DBU, or Digital Banking Unit, is the latest development, which is going to come in a very big way. So today, uh, the bank is not uh, thinking in terms of expanding its footprints in the form of uh, uh, the brick and mortar branches, but expanding its touch points. So the purpose is to reach out to the client, and that can be achieved by any of these ways. So this is uh, one part. And then the, another one, as I mentioned about uh, the fintechs, and uh, as I told that fintechs are here to stay and fintechs are a reality today. So there is every possibility of some having some kind of collaboration rather than competing, rather than conflicting. Uh, if the collaboration happens, it is nothing but better. Because what is happening is banks are having the financial muscle. Fintechs may be lacking that financial muscle, but fintechs are very alert and uh, very, very agile. So if we think about a combination of uh, using their agility, using their technological uh, uh, capability, along with the financial muscle, it could be a win-win situation. So that is also uh, something which uh, everybody is now thinking and working on that. And when I talk about mobile banking, of course, you are all aware that uh, there are so many applications uh, with most of the banks. And uh, the power of this application today, that what it can do, you can just uh, uh, imagine how this can be profitably used. For example, my own banks, Bob World. We call it Bob World. BOB stands for Bank of Baroda. World. We use this word because world means it is uh, unlimited opportunities. There is everything in this world. So our Bob World also aims to provide everything within the, this particular uh, mobile. And our MD and CEO, Sri Sanjeev Chadda sir, he famously uh, observes, he remarks, and he also states that the Bank of Baroda customer need not come to the bank branches except for operating their locker. Because whatever other things are there, everything is provided here. And uh, it, uh, uh, it is functioning on four principles, important principles, four important parameters, uh, save, invest, borrow, and shop. Of course, you are aware because of the ad uh, discreet of uh, uh, Tata New that these are the functions available. And I'm assuring you, whatever the functions are there, the same are available in Bob World, or for that matter, in the other banks. Uh, SBI has uh, come out with the, their pro, uh, this one. Uh, everything is there in one particular uh, app. Now, save, you can open the account, open the RD, open the FD, open any term deposit. Borrow. As I said, by a click of uh, uh, one finger, I mentioned about pre-approved loans. In our bank, up to 50,000 loan without any paperwork, just by going to Bobbert and clicking one particular option, 50,000 as per your eligibility will be created to your account. And beyond 50,000 up to 5 lakh, uh, through the digital model also, you can avail this loan. And apart from that, apart from borrow, Invest because today banking is not just restricted to borrowing and lending. This is the basic uh, definition of banking borrowing for the purpose of lending and investment, monies of deposit. This is the conventional definition of the banking if you happen to be a student of banking. But today, banking is not just restricted to that. Every bank wants to become a financial superpower, financial powerhouse. Our bank, Bank of Baroda, we proudly proclaim that we are. India's international bank. Because we have, apart from uh, more than 8,500 plus touch points in uh, India, spread across the country, we have presence in about 19 
countries across the globe of about more than 94 uh, branches uh, in various countries. If you have seen uh, the logo of Bank of Baroda, it is not just uh, the B. Inside the B, there is a rising sun. And we proudly say that uh, Baroda sun never sets. Because as we have presence across the globe, uh, and 24 by 7, one or other branch across the globe is open. So we proudly say that the Baroda sun never sets. But apart from uh, being uh, India's international bank, we also uh, profess that we are a financial supermarket because we have a credit card arm which issues credit card, not only for a bank of product customer, for anybody. Uh, we have an investment uh, arm in the form of a Baroda Capital. We have uh, uh, the mutual fund arm, the Baroda Mutual Fund. Uh, we have an uh, uh, insurance arm, that is India First Insurance. So today, if you go to any bank branch, it is not just to deposit the money, or uh, withdraw the money, or take a demand draft, or borrow loan, or uh, avail some other services, but also you can uh, invest in the mutual fund, you can invest in SIP, you can uh, also uh, take insurance policy on your life, on the health, for your uh, uh, properties. So anything under the financial uh, world you can do in a bank. The same thing what the bank offers is available in this bond. So that is invest. Save, invest, borrow, and the fourth dimension is a shop. Of course, we are all the habitual spenders and we are all the consumers and we do a lot of shopping. And today, as this option is provided on Bob World, you can also do a lot of shopping here. And one added feature is that you can compare the prices of products in the same platform and take a suitable decision. So friends, this is what is uh, today's position as far as the uh, technological uh, platform of uh, the banks are concerned. I told about digital loans. Of course, pre-approved loan I have already covered. But since you are all studying in a, a very premier institute like uh, Indian Institute of uh, Management, Bangalore, and all the uh, maybe a little bit interested to know something about education loan, uh, I will fail in my duty if I do not touch about uh, the technological prowesses of my bank as far as this education loan is concerned. And uh, today when I'm speaking in front of you, it is very pertinent here that our bank is in the final uh, stage of uh, rolling out this end-to-end -end education loan solution. Uh, I'm, I'm sure in a few days we are making a big announcement about that. And this is going to be a very, very important uh, initiative as far as education loan is concerned. All over the country, 360 plus institutes, premier institutes, have been mapped. They have been identified. They are brought to our platform. And I'm very happy that in Bangalore, Indian Institute of Management Bangalore and Indian Institute of Science Bangalore are there. And these premier institutes are categorized A, B, C, D like that. And a very attractive feature is that in case of a institute of a A category, up to 40 lakh, it is collateral free loan up to 40 lakhs is collateral free loan. And this entire journey of a loan happens on digital platform. In other words, if anybody is interested to avail a education loan for pursuing studies in IIMB, he need not visit any branches. He can just log into our uh, uh, portal. And every journey is taken care of through the digital manner only. Since these institutes are uh, mapped, these institutes are under our portal, with all the information about uh, the course, course fee, course period, expenses involved, including the bank details of the institute. Like say, for example, in IIMB, if anybody takes an education loan, when the, the requirement of the loan comes, the portal will assess the need on the basis of uh, the uh, cost of the course, which is already available in the portal, assess and come at a uh, predetermined amount, that is your eligibility. On the basis of eligibility criteria, the loan will be appraised, sanctioned, documents uh, done, digital way, and mind you, even the disbursement happens digitally. You need not go to the branch in order to get the amount uh, disbursed. The amount will be directly credited to the account of uh, Indian Institute of Management Bank. 
So this is uh, the digital journey which uh, the banks are uh, intending. Now, friends, with all this, and one more development as far as uh, the institutional uh, banking is concerned, SNA accounts, single nodal agency. This, especially in ca case of great organizations, big organizations, government departments, where uh, there are uh, multiple number of uh, accounts connected to them. Uh, the concept of a parent and child accounts. That is also a very new development today. And uh, there is a parent account from where uh, the authorities will control the flow of the funds incoming as well as outgoing. Friends, with this, uh, what will be the way forward? Do you think that uh, uh, the technological advancement has reached its pinnacle and from here, where to go? If we think that uh, uh, the journey has come to an end, it is certainly no. Because every day, innovations are taking place. From manual to the first uh, computer, it might have taken a decade. But uh, from uh, uh, RTGS to mobile banking, it took only a few, uh, few years. So we don't know every year what is going to happen. But certainly, a few trends will emerge. First thing, as I said, the collaboration between the various players. That has to happen today or tomorrow. You cannot uh, uh, ensure, uh, we cannot uh, assure that uh, everybody will be functioning in silos. There has to be coordination among various players. Then uh, emerging trends, uh, emerging technologies uh, like uh, data analytics, artificial intelligence, machine learning, blockchain technology, robotic process automation, which are at the nascent stage today, are definitely going to be the defining uh, uh, technologies in the days to come. Because today also, we have started in a big way, as I said earlier, the customer behavioral pattern, the preferences, uh, the likes and dislikes, uh, the spends, the trends from uh, his uh, uh, functioning, everything is uh, just identified and uh, caught. And this data, the data may be historical data, the current data, or the future trends. Everything will be captured, and on that basis, the banks are in a position to make sound decisions, devise the product, devise the strategies, devise the delivery channel, and deliver the services or products at the disposal of the customers. So this is going to be uh, the order of the day in the days to come. Uh, then, finally, with all this exciting journey, the current capabilities, and uh, the future uh, outlook, what should be our thought process? What should be our final conclusion on uh, the technology in banking sphere? Friends, I am, uh, as I said, I am not uh, a authority or a domain expert in this. I can only gauge the future, uh, but I have some personal uh, uh, preferences and views also, which I want to share with you and conclude. First and foremost thing is that, of course, to large extent, all of you, although uh, you are all the tech savvy youngsters, the Gen Y or Gen X, whatever it may be. All of us will agree on one common thing is that technology is welcome, no doubt about that. But behind technology, there is something called human touch, which is also important. So that is a, a, the very important essence. According to me personally, whatever could be the technological capabilities, if it lacks the personal touch, we have all heard uh, some of the rhetorics of politicians that reforms with the uh, personal touch, reforms with the uh, human touch. Just like that in banking, uh, when we talk about technology, it is most welcome, but there has to be some personal touch. Today, sometimes all of us feel irritated. If you navigate through uh, any of uh, the uh, customer call center, how much you feel uh, difficult just to uh, speak to the personal uh, assistant. It is never happening, isn't it? When you go to press one, press two, press nine, all these things are happening. But only after uh, two or three stages, you will get an option of speaking to uh, the uh, human being. Whatever could be the technological option provided, at certain stage, you need that kind of comfort of human touch. So I firmly believe whatever could be the technological capabilities, if we forget the personal touch, uh, that's not uh, the proper way. So we should have the personal touch element somewhere in our uh, technological process. Coming to uh, the data, today, as I said, everything is technology-driven, data-driven, without any human, human intervention. 
So that also uh, exposes us to a lot of risks. So data protection, cyber security is definitely an area which nobody can uh, uh, forego, nobody can uh, underestimate. We are all uh, uh, the victims of uh, uh, all these things, uh, the cyber threats and uh, uh, con affairs at some point or other. Uh, very recently, I was just uh, excited to see some of the ad released by my bank. Uh, it's a very fascinating ad. Uh, in that, uh, the husband gets one call. Uh, somebody, some lady voice was speaking from the other side. And she's telling, uh, your uh, KYC is going to expire. Your card is going to be blocked. And uh, your KYC need to be updated. So one OTP will come. The husband, well aware, well educated, a very cautious uh, uh, person, educated person. He listened to her carefully. And when he was engaged in the conversation, his wife asks him, con thi? And he replies, con thi, C-O-N, con thi. So today everybody understands. Jabdara has become a uh, household annoyed for everybody. So we are all aware, we are all uh, uh, careful. RBI and all the banks are uh, uh, bringing out a lot of uh, educative services, informing the customer about pitfalls of all these things. Uh, to become very cautious in dealing with the, all these type of situations. But still, data protection is very important. So while the banks need to take uh, all precautions uh, at their side, uh, also there is a need to create a, uh, uh, education among the all. So with this, adopting a suitable model, uh, convenient to suit all situations, because one size doesn't fit all. So the best part is, uh, you have to, the banks have to adopt uh, the models and uh, strategies which is convenient to all sections. So, uh, a healthy blend of technology supported by prudent management uh, policies and above all, the personal touch will make banking a very, very uh, enjoyable affair for everybody. So, friends, I hope you have thank all of you, the organizers especially, for giving me this opportunity to interact with the young and fresh uh, brains like all of you. In fact, interacting with you also rejuvenated uh, my spirits and my uh, youthfulness also. Thank you very much. This was indeed an insightful session, sir. Listening from you about banking, technology and innovation has definitely increased our knowledge as student managers in this domain. Thank you so much, sir. As a token of gratitude, we would like to present a memento to you on behalf of I am Bangalore. I would like to invite Puma Singh, OC head, to present the memento and Praveen, senior coordinator of Vista OC, to present the memento to sir. Thank you everyone for attending the session. Have a great day. Please be seated for two minutes. Yeah.